In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to elevate your Canva frames with my 4R system. Four simple techniques to make any frame stand out. And it's also going to give you a template that is highly flexible and that can save you a lot of time. Now this video is really part of a series. First, there's my super popular and easy to follow method for creating Canva custom frames. So I can link that above. And if you watch to the end of this video, I can also give you a custom cheat sheet you can print out and have handy. That's gonna show you how to easily turn any shape into a Canva frame. Next, I have another video that teaches five simple methods for coming up with custom frame ideas so that you're never gonna run out of cool ideas. And again, I can link that video above and I will also link it in the video description down below. And then this video is really going to build on those two prior videos. So they're going to ensure that we have endless frame ideas, but now that we have these frames, how do we get the most out of them? How do we elevate them? So in this video, I'm teaching my 4R system that's going to help you elevate any frame. It's going to make that frame part of a cohesive design. And then I have my special trick for any time you update it with a new picture, it's going to be super easy to get it to work well with the design because of this special trick. So we're going to cover all this. And then at the end, I'll make sure you have that link to that custom cheat sheet so you always know how to build a custom frame and I have one other cool bonus as well so make sure you watch to the end all right let's dive in and figure out what this 4R system is all about in this video we're talking about how do you take a frame in Canva and give it that little bit extra so it really pops off the screen and how do we do this in such a way so that at the end we end up with a final asset that can easily take on new pictures we can easily update the colors it's going to continue to look good so really what we're talking about here is a system a methodology something we can use for any frame a process we can use to make it look even better and then something that's going to give us a final asset that's easy to update if you watch this channel you know that's what i'm all about i want to come up with final assets that are reusable and i want to develop workflows that are efficient both of these things save me time and that's a huge asset when you can build something out you want it to look good of course but you also want to save time so for developing a system like this, we might as well give it a catchy title just for fun. So I'm going to call this Greg's 4R system for adding flexibility and flair to any frame. Now that's a little bit of a mouthful, but what I want to focus on there is the 4Rs. This is the 4R system. So what are the 4Rs going to be in this 4R system? Repeat, resize, reposition, and recolor. Now we're using this in this instance, specifically talking about custom frames, but really what we do in this lesson could be applied to a lot of different graphic designs you might be doing. Now I don't want to oversimplify, graphic design could be any manner of project, so what we do in this design might not apply to every single project, of course, but there are a lot of instances where this sort of repetition, this sort of establishing contrast, and the sort of color trick we're going to do in this, it could apply in a lot of cases, so hopefully what you learn here you can apply to other projects as well, not just working with custom frames. So let's take this frame here and let's start to utilize this 4R system. So the first R is repeat. So what I'm going to do is create a copy of this frame. So I'm going to click on the frame itself and duplicate it. And now I have the second copy of the frame. Now you could keep the same picture in this frame and just lower the opacity and move it around if you wanted to. But remember frames can also just hold solid colors. And that's how we're going to use our frames for the most part in this system. So I'm going to take this and maybe we'll just make this color black. So I'm going to make it uh, a black layer here. And what I'll do is I'll take it here and we'll push it behind our main layer here. And I'll reposition it. Let me actually make this all a little smaller so we can see a little bit better. And we'll reposition it just so that we have sort of now this contrast within our design. So really the purpose of this repeating uh, is something is so that we can one bring in contrast by adding a different color to the frame and two that repetition of this shape within our design that's just going to sort of strengthen the design by having that repeated element in our design so there's one copy here but what we're going to do is just do the same thing again i'll click right on it this time Control d to duplicate and remember resize reposition recolor now as we talk about the recolor portion of this remember we're going for an easily repeatable system that's going to work well the vast majority of the time. And picking out colors can be hard. Sometimes if you don't have experience, it's easy to get it wrong. Colors that don't sort of mesh well together. And it's also something where you can just spend a lot of time scratching your head. So the system I like to use most of the time to keep it simple 
and sticking with things that I'm pretty sure are going to work is pulling color tones from the photo itself. Because if you use the same color tones or different shades of those tones, a lot of the time they're going to work pretty well together. So we have this red in the photo here, but if I want to pull any of the colors from the, the photos in my design already, I can just click on this, come up to the recolor icon. And as I do this, I'll also mention that my Canva interface might look slightly different than yours because this is after Canva's uh, had their big updates this year and they had the Canva Glow Up, which is this new interface. So now suddenly I have menus on the right. You might still have them on the left. So the design interface might look slightly different uh, in your workspace, but don't worry, all the same features are in here. Uh, so just think about the process and not necessarily where some of these menus are if they're slightly different than where you have them. But so I'm gonna click on here, I'll click on this color palette. Again, you might be finding it up here, but we're gonna click on this color palette. And then come in here, I'm gonna use this see all button. And so I can see all the photo colors. Now again, if you have a menu in a different place up here, you're still gonna see photo colors and you're gonna see a photo and then you're gonna see a representation of the different colors in that photo. So I can very easily grab that red. I can grab sort of her skin tone. I can grab any of these colors very easily. So what I think I'll do is I'll take this red color here and then what I'm gonna do is take this layer that we just created and we're gonna push it to the background. So I need to X out of this color part of this, come under my position menu here, just so I can drag it behind this and I'll drag it behind the other layer as well. And again, now we're gonna use that resize thing because I wanna make this a different size. So maybe I want it to sort of cut across my design like this. So I'm repeating part of the shape like that. So maybe I will fool around till I get something I like. I can always zoom out if I need to down here. So maybe something like where I'm getting this element here as the repeated element. So something like that I might like. Now the other thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna play with the opacity because I don't want this color to blend totally right up here. I want the red to sort of be a different shade. So to accomplish that, I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna lower down the opacity. So I use that red color and now I'm lowering down the opacity. This is sort of an important part of about this trick is playing around with the opacity. So we're gonna lower it down. We're gonna use that. So we're using just a slightly different color tone of this red here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna continue this repeat, resize, recolor, repeat this process until I have something that I think looks good. Now you can repeat your frame as few or as many times as you want. You just have to arrive at something you think looks good. So I'm gonna hit Control D again to duplicate this again. Let's make it smaller again. And then since the opacity on this layer isn't like full opacity, it's not 100%. So we're able to see through to other layers, which has this interesting layered element we have. So now I could bring this and I could bring it down like this, something like this whatever I think looks good. So again, just playing around to see what portions of this are showing through in my design. Maybe I want something like this. Maybe I want something like this. Again, this is all just experimentation, playing around, uh, repeating the shapes until you get something that you think looks good. Now, of course, you could also rotate this. So I could come in here and let me find my rotation there. And so I could come in here, I could rotate it so it looks a little different like that. So all of these things are in play you're just trying to find something that looks good to your eye. Now, once I've repeated the frame a few times, I have something that I think looks reasonable, I think is making the frame itself pop out, stand out and look pretty good. Then as a final step, I will sometimes add a rectangle that I put behind everything. So I'm just gonna tap the R key on my keyboard. I will expand this rectangle so it fits the entire frame here. I wanna make sure it's pulling the same red color. I think that since that's the color I used yet last, yes it is. So I'll grab this color here just to make sure if I wanted to make sure I could come in here and make sure I'm choosing that same red I did before. It didn't change, change. so yes, I had that color. Then I'll come into position. I'm gonna put this rectangle behind everything and then of course it's obscuring things now. So once again, I wanna to come to the opacity and bring that way down just so it's another element in there. And now I have these different varying shades of this color red. So it's working together. And this is an analogous color scheme where we have a lot of similar colors just using various shades of the same color. So usually this is a process that's gonna work pretty well and it's gonna look pretty good. Now, of course, all of this has flexibility because I can come in here and I can change colors. So I could come in here and this one black color that I'm using just underneath, I could change that to white if I wanted to see what that looked like. I think I like it better as black. But then the other, lying, other layers in here, let me bring this one behind the black actually because I want this one to be behind the black. But then these three layers here, the important part about these 
is that they're all using the same color red. And I'll show you how that's going to end up being a very important feature of this as we move forward. But so here is the element here. Here is our final look of this one design with this one particular picture in here. And then I can show you now where we started from. So we started with this and now we have this design here. Now, there are some elements of this plane design here with just the frame that I like better because the stark contrast of the red with the white works really well. But the purpose of this redone design here with all these repeated elements isn't that it's gonna be the perfect fit every time. It's that it's gonna give us a great starting point and we can always pivot off of here. So what do I mean by pivot? Let me just make a duplicate copy of this. So let's hit Control D to duplicate that. Uh, so what if I wanted to pivot off of this? Well, let's see how these different layers with varying transparency are gonna come into play. So let me just click on sort of my background rectangle there. And now if I come in here under the color swatch, I can hit see all, we're using this red. What if I decide, hmm, I wanna see what it looks like using this skin tone here, this color right here. Well, I can click on that. And because I'm using the other color red throughout in those other frames as well, I can use change all and boom, I can instantly update it. So now I can cycle through and try it with these different colors and I can easily update the whole thing. So that's the point. Using those different colors makes it very easy to update. You can also come in here and say, mm, I don't like the background rectangle at all. I want to bring that white back so I can delete that. There's all these different things you can do to vary off of this. It just gives you a great starting point. You can still come in here. You can get rid of some of these uh, copies of the frame. You can change the color that's in them. You can use, you know, in other words, you don't have to always have the same shade. You can come in here and you can choose a different color entirely. So you're not stuck with what you started with, but it does give you that great starting point. You might love it. And then it gives you something you can very easily vary off of. So let me just hit Control Z to get back to where we have all the different shades of the same color now. And let's see how this comes into play when you choose a different photo. So let me just come up here under the elements. I'm just gonna choose something like model and colorful just so I get some different options that pop up here. And let me come in here and find a different option. Let's find something that really pops and has a different color scheme. So let's just drag this one in here now. So now suddenly the red or the yellow or what we have might not work. We might wanna try a different color. So let me just click on this. Again, really quickly come on our color palette. I can really quickly see the colors from this photo. And because I have this change all option, boom, very quickly, I can come up with a color scheme that works well with this photo because I can really quickly pull those colors from that photo. Let's do another one. Let's just come down here. Let me just go through and find something different. So what about this one right here? We have this green in here that might be interesting to use. So again, click on this, come up here, change the color, do see all, let's find that green, boom. Let's change all, boom. Very quickly, we can come up and find a color scheme that's working well with this frame. So this is why I like this system. It allows you to sort of have these repeat design elements. So this sort of flare here, this little jagged edge, we're getting it here, here, and here. So that's an interesting element to the eye. We're creating this contrast with that black copy of the frame right behind here. That's making the frame itself sort of stand off and jump off the page. And then using those varying layers of transparency, all using that frame and then that rectangle in the background, we can very easily update our color scheme. So now we have something that's gonna save us time because we're not gonna have to spend endless hours figuring out what colors we're gonna use. We can pull them directly from the photo. So maybe we like this green, but maybe we also wanna try the pink. So let me just come in here again, see all, find that pink that's in that photo, change all, yes, boom. Very quickly, we can update the color scheme, scheme and have something work very well. So that's the point. You want a process that's repeatable and then you want a final asset where now if I save this as my final asset and I use this as a template, I know very quickly I can drag in new elements. I can repeat. Well, that's the one we just did. Let's find something different again. Let's find uh, this one here really quickly. Drag something in really quickly. Come in here really quickly. See all the colors. Pull this color. Change all. Boom. Very quickly come up with a new color scheme. So let's just look at a few more examples here where we are applying this for our system. So we have this frame here and then the next screen here. So again, repeat the frame, resize it, reposition, recolor it. Those are the four R's, repeat, resize, reposition, recolor. So here's another example here and another example here where we're duplicating that frame. We're bringing in the, some of the different colors from the photo. And again, just changing the orientation, changing how things fit together. 
One more example here, we got this, and then we have, again, repeating that element, and then final another example here, and then here a final design here. Now with this one here, I even have the frame pop-out effect, so that's a different video. I will sort of place a link up above if you want to see how to do a frame pop-out effect like this, but you can obviously apply what we're doing in this lesson with other things you learn about Canva, but the point with this lesson is something that's repeatable, something that you can reuse that save, saves you time, that gives you a system for picking colors, that gives you a system for adding these complementary elements to your frame. This is why we create systems like this. They give us a good starting point. It doesn't lock you into just using that asset. You can still make choices, you can still make changes, but it gets you to a good starting point very quickly. So thanks for watching. I hope you find this 4R system helpful. Again, the idea for building systems like this is just to give you a methodology you can always follow. It keeps you from getting stuck. And in this case, it's going to give you a final asset that has that flexibility built in that's going to give you a final template that's easy to update that can save you time. Of course, if you found this helpful and you like videos like this, feel free to like and subscribe below. And also at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that custom frame cheat sheet. I have the custom frame cheat sheet and a couple other things for you as well. I'm going to take this 4R system. I'm going to put that into a cheat sheet. And I'm also going to take some of the frames and designs we created in this video. I'm going to put them together into a Canva design and share it as a template link. So you'll have free access to those as well. All you have to do for all these things is just sign up for my email list. So I'll have a link to all that below as the first pinned comment and also put it in the video's description below. So make sure you take advantage and grab those freebies. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you soon.